आइसोमॉर्फिक ग्राफ पार्ट टू क्वेश्चन ग्राफ जी इज आइसोमॉर्फिक टू एच इफ एस फाइन वन वन एन ऑन टू फंक्शन सो फर्स्ट वी विल काउंट द नंबर ऑफ वर्टस एजेस एंड देन द डिग्री सीक्वेंस इफ द ऑल द थिंग्स आर सेम देन वी विल स्टार्ट बिल्डिंग दी मैपिंग so in a graph g it has a six vertices and seven edges whereas a graph h is also has six vertices and seven edges for the degree sequence first we will calculate the degree of each vertex so after finding the degree of each vertex we will write the degree sequence that is a non increasing order so highest degree vertex in this case is a 3 then again 3 then the rest of the vertices degree is 2 now for the graph h there are two vertices of degree 3 and four vertices of degree 2 as we can observe that the number of vertices in both the graphs are same as well as edges are same as well as degree sequence is also same it means graph g can be isomorphic to the edge so for that we need to build the mapping means we need to find a function such that the vertices of the graph g is mapped with the vertices of the graph h so one procedure we have already discussed in the previous video here is a new procedure that is basically a trick for that we will take the positioning of the vertices of the graph g so graph g vertices are placed like this way so now we will try to rebuild the graph h in form of g starting with the highest degree of the vertices so in this case there are a two vertices whose degree is 3 same we have a two vertices whose degree is 3 in a graph h so let's identify those vertices so in a graph g d and b degree is 3 and the vertex b is adjacent with a f and c where d vertex is adjacent with a e c now we will pick the vertices whose degree is 3 in a graph h so they are v1 v2 and where v1 is adjacent with v6 v5 and v4 and v2 is adjacent with v6 v5 and v3 now the degree of each of these vertices are 2 now you can observe that the vertex b has a degree 3 and it is adjacent with the three vertices whose degrees are 2 2 and 2 respectively and in a graph h v1 is a vertex whose degree is 3 and it is also adjacent with the three vertices whose degrees are 2 2 2 respectively it means we can map a vertex b with the v1 so b is over here so we can write here as a v1 so it means the map a vertex d with the v2 because there does not exist any other vertex of degree 3 so in place of d we will place v2 now you can observe over here vertex b and d have two common adjacent vertices one is a and another is a c and same in a graph h v1 and v2 have two common adjacent vertices one is v6 and another is a v5 so it means we have a two choices a can be mapped with v6 and c can be mapped with v5 or a can be mapped with v5 and c can be mapped with v6 let's take one pair of mapping so we are mapping a with v6 and c with v5 so with this you can also identify that in a vertex b one vertex is left that is not mapped that is a f and we have already mapped b with the v1 and even it has a one vertex that is not mapped so means in place of f we can keep v4 and in case of d vertex e vertex is unreserved whereas for the v2 v3 is unreserved it means in place of e3 we can map v3 now we will check whether our mapping is correct or not so for that we are going to follow a graph h 
so we need to check an edge between the vertices so start with one by one so there is an edge between v1 and v6 this edge is covered so next edge is between v6 and v2 so this edge is also covered now v5 v2 so this is also covered now v1 v5 covered now v2 v3 this is also covered v4 v3 we have covered this edge the last edge is between v1 and v4 with this we are getting a exactly a graph g so it means our mapping is correct in which we have mapped the vertex a with a v6 b with the v1 vertex c with a v5 d vertex is mapped with v2 e with a v3 f with a v4 so this is the mapping we are getting in this case further we need to verify whether this mapping is correct or not with the help of adjacency matrix now with respect to this mapping we will find the adjacency matrix for the graph g and h for the verification whether the mapping is correct or not so for that first we will take the ordering of the vertices in the case of graph g we are taking the ordering as a b c d e f so same order we are going to follow for the row wise so it is a 6 cross 6 matrix now a is mapped with v6 so in place of a we will take a v6 for the adjacency matrix for the graph h and in place of v we will take a v1 in place of c take v5 in place of d take v2 in place of e take v3 and in place of f we will take v4 take same ordering of the vertices as a row wise now we will find the adjacency matrix for the graph g so a is adjacent with b and d so these entries are one and rest of the entries are zero b is adjacent with a and c and f c is adjacent with b and d d is adjacent with a and c as well as e e is adjacent with d and f f is adjacent with e and b so these are the non-zero entries for the graph g in its adjacency matrix same find the adjacency matrix for the graph h so this is the vertex v6 so v6 is adjacent with v2 and v1 v1 is adjacent with v6 v5 and v4 then next v5 is adjacent with v1 and v2 so next is a v2 So let's try to prove that this graph G is isomorphic to H or a not. So total number of vertices in a graph G is 5 and total number of vertices in a graph H is again 5. So total number of edges in this graph is 6 and total number of edges in a graph H is also 6. So after calculating the degree of each vertex, we can write the degree sequence. So there are two vertices of the highest degree that is 3 and 3 and rest of the vertices of degree 2. So this is the degree sequence for the graph G. So degree sequence for the graph H is this. So in this case the number of vertices, number of edges and the degree sequence is same for the graph H and G. So therefore it may be they are isomorphic. Now we are going to build the mapping between the graph G and H with the same trick. So for that we will create a complicated graph in form of simple. So in this case the simplest form is a graph H. So let's try to rebuild the graph G in form of H. So for that we will take the placing of the vertices of the graph H. So this is how the vertices are placed in a graph H. So first we will take the highest degree vertex that is the 3. 
so it has a two vertices of the degree three even it has a two vertices of the degree three so one is u1 and another is a u3 and in this case v1 and v3 so let's try to map u1 with the v1 and u3 with the v3 now from the graph edge we can observe that v1 and v3 have common adjacent vertex v2 now we need to check whether u1 and u3 have any common adjacent vertex let's check it in a graph g so u1 and u3 have one common adjacent vertex that is the u4 so in place of v2 we will place u4 now we need to label these two vertices in the graph of edge v1 is adjacent with v5 v2 and v3 in the graph g u1 is adjacent with the u3 this is already placed over here with the u4 already placed over here and last is the u5 so in place of v5 we will place u5 so it means this is the placing for the last vertex that is the u3 now we need to check whether our mapping is correct or not follow the graph g u1 is adjacent with the u3 so u1 is adjacent with the u3 u1 is adjacent with the u4 u4 u1 is adjacent with the u5 u2 is adjacent with the u5 u2 is adjacent with the u5 u2 is adjacent with the u3 u3 last edge is u3 to u4 and now you can observe that we are getting a similar graph to the graph edge so we have reconstructed the graph g in form of edge by mapping of the vertices as a u1 is mapped with the v1 u2 that is over here and it is mapped with the v4 vertex u3 is mapped with the vertex v3 vertex u4 is mapped with the v2 vertex u5 is mapped with the v5 next we will provide the justification that this mapping is correct with the help of adjacency matrix for that first we are going to take the ordering of the vertices for the graph g as u1 u2 u3 u4 and u5 and same for the row wise and for the adjacency matrix for the graph edge we are going to refer the mapping so here u1 is mapped with the v1 so in place of u1 we will fix v1 in place of u2 we will take v4 and in place of u3 v3 u4 v2 u5 v5 same ordering of the vertices as a row wise you can check it the adjacency matrix for the graph g is equal to the adjacency matrix for the graph edge under this mapping So this implies graph G is clearly isomorphic to H.